Oh, I'm so sorry, folks. Yeah, we're going to try it again. Hi, all. Sorry. Maybe this will work better. Gosh, I am so, so frustrated with Facebook. If it wasn't so helpful, I'd just say kick it to the kick it to the corner to the side of the street and go on with it, right? But unfortunately, this is what we got. So we deal with it, right? Hi, Robin Allen. Hi, Carrie Van. Norma Bentley, Kevin and Chris Vaughn, thanks. Barbara Wolf, good morning. You know, this is hard enough without having technical problems. <laughs> Hi, Don Jones. Good morning, Kip. I hope everybody's with us. We're up to 17, so maybe maybe we actually gain some people. <laughs> We're going to start it all over again, folks. We're all over again. So here we go. I don't know what time it, it dropped out, but it seems that we're doing better now. Oh, it's so frustrating. I don't need this on Monday. <laughs> I don't need this on Monday at all. I don't need it any day. All right. So we're going to put this one behind us. Um, now we really, 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 really need to do my breathing exercises because so I can get what's cluttering my mind out and the aggravation I got to get out too. So, all right. So I'm going to breathe in for five, hold it for five, exhale for five, and then we're going to get going. Remember the big news. If you're on session or participate in session, we have a session meeting tomorrow night. It's at 7 p.m. It's online. So you should be getting all of, all of uh, that, uh, um, the papers that you need and uh, everything should be coming the email from Andrea Carlson today. I was talking with her last night to make sure that we had everything. All right. So we're going to get moving. I'm going to breathe in for five, hold it for five, exhale for five, and then we're going to read devotions. Are you ready? Here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hi, Sandy Sarabeck and Judy Hatch, Larry and Carolyn Thomas, Barbara Wolf. I did my breathing. Thank you so much. Are you ready? Let's go over here and do our uh, do our readings. Our opening devotion is Psalm 5. Psalm 5. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths, their hearts are destruction, their throats are open graves. They flatter with their tongues. Make them bear, bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. All right. So let's move on to our uh, prophetic reading, which is out of Isaiah. We've been in Isaiah an awful lot here. And rightly so, you know, as uh, for Christmas, the run-up to Christmas, because we can see that the birth of our Savior was trumpeted, right, and uh, uh, in Isaiah, 500 years before uh, the uh, birth of Christ. We're going to read out of Isaiah 40, it's verses 12 through 24. So just to set this in place, this is at the very end of what we call Deutero-Isaiah, or Second Isaiah. It's, and if you looked at Isaiah, it's all one book, but uh, we can kind of, uh, academics can look at it and say, you know, there's seems like there's some differences here, and they can change it into three sections. So we have Proto, which is 1st Isaiah, 
and then we have Deutero Isaiah, and then we have um, uh, Third Isaiah. So this is the second part. It's at the end where all of the gods um, uh, condemning uh, uh, about the the behavior of the Israelites and also um, their punishment, which was the ex exile. So it's getting towards the end of that, but it's not the bright sunny morning that happens a little bit later in Isaiah either. But so let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? I'm going to stop right here and just give you a little bit of a kernel. Um, so this is God putting out saying, look, I am sovereign and I'm above you. And you don't, if you don't believe it, here's some examples, right? You tell me how I can do these things without being sovereign. Okay, here we go. Who has, dis who has directed the spirit of the Lord or, his, or as his counselors has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment? And who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness compared with him? An idol? Workmen cast it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and cast it uh, for silver chains. As a gift one chooses, mulberry wood, wood that will not rot, that then seeks out a skilled artisan to set up an image that will not topple. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. There's some um, thought. When we read a prophetic word, book, any prophetic book, um, we need to be, uh, be attentive to who's speaking, right? Um, because there's multiple people that can. And it's God speaks at times, right? But sometimes it's the prophet speaking. And this one is probably Isaiah speaking, what he knows about God. But he's saying, look, I'm telling you these things, and here's why. Look at these things. They come from God. The, the, um, but there's another th thought process that says that what we just read was actually God speaking. So um, it is from God. It's a matter of who, who it comes through. Um, but um, there's enough third person uh, references that we think there was probably, I think it was probably Isaiah. So they talk about the idols, and that's important, because the idols that were, um, that were made, remember the, the, the Israelite people, the Hebrew people were told don't have idols, right? Well, in the land uh, that they're there, there was other religions already in place, and they had idols, and there's some thought that there was some mixing of this. So these idols are made of wood and um, uh, and people worship them. You're saying, don't do that, right? We worship the living God. All right, let's move over into uh, New Testament. And uh, we're into a new book here. It's Ephesians, um, or Ephesus. It's the churches in Ephesus. And we're going to read the very, very beginning here. So we're going to see the very typical introduction to not only a biblical letter, right, but any letter that would have been written in this time frame um, in Greek. This is, this is the standard format that we see. So here we go. Let's read from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. This is a, a letter from Paul to the church in Ephesus. Remember, he rarely writes a letter unless he's got 
something on his mind. So let's listen. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from our God, our from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purposes of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So a uh, real good nutshell, right, of uh, if you're going to have an elevator speech, you know, an elevator speech, if you get in the elevator, so you got what? maybe uh, a minute, right, uh, to tell somebody something. What are you going to tell them? And if you were going to do that with a gospel, this is as good as anything to say this is, this is what our beliefs are, right, that we have um, the blessings of the Holy Spirit in our lives through God's actions and God's actions alone. And Paul's being very clear here. It's according to his pleasure that these things happen. So God wants us to be adopted and wants us to be in communion with him. But he is a God that's a jealous God, and we need to follow his things. And that's that's the covenant. That's the covenant. So Paul is introducing into this letter. There's other things that will come on along. We'll find we hear those. But right now he's just saying, hey, these are the things that we hold in common. So Paul often does this. He establishes the commonality that he has with people before he gets into what he really wants to change about people, right? So he makes me, hey, we're, we really are one. We share all this stuff together, right? So let me talk to you about these other things. All right, we'll move on to the gospel reading. And uh, th again, we're at the beginning of, of a book. This is the very, very beginning of Mark. And uh, it's chapter 1, verses 1 through 13. Uh, and uh, Mark uh, is the earliest of the gospels. We think it is the oldest of the gospels, or it at least came down to us in its purest form. And you say, well, how do we know that? Because there isn't any dates on these things. And certainly the oldest copies that we have are much, much younger than, you know, 33 AD. Um, but we do think that Mark was written and put down and transmitted, right, probably from like the 60, like, like um, um, fairly quickly after it, you know, maybe 40 to 60 AD. And the others, we think, are a little bit later than that, maybe. So uh, definitely there. Are, and you say, how do they know that? Well, there's references throughout all the Gospels about events, and they have the historical timeline, and they say, well, now this one didn't mention This one mentions it, so it has to be at least after this date. And that's how they, it's pretty much how they do it. Okay, so we're going to read Mark, though. Let's see. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized him by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. 
Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. How many of you are saying, hey, I was at church yesterday, or I was listening to church, watching church, and this is very similar to the gospel reading that we had yesterday, which we did out of Matthew. Mark is, we believe Matthew and uh, and uh, Luke had Mark's gospel as a, as a basis. And you can see here that many of the same things, but again, it's uh, as one of the things that Mark Mark is is very simplified, right? It's a boom, boom, boom. So we see this, and uh, but you're saying, look, we talked about the baptism of Jesus yesterday. Yes, we did. And uh, the reason for that is um, the Catholic Church, which shares the Revised Common Lectionary with the Protestant churches that uh, subscribe to it. Uh, was actually, uh, they celebrate Epiphany on a Sunday as a high holy day. So the Epiphany, although even though that happened on Friday, was celebrated in Catholic churches on Sunday. So they're actually celebrating, they're having special masses today for the baptism of the Lord. So this is where, this is what they're getting. So I don't need to go into depth on this, other than I will tell you this. Here's, here's a confession. Are you ready to hear my confession? So, um, there's sometimes, as a minister, when you walk out of worship and you're like, I missed the mark on that one. And, um, you know, um, it's, it's something that we, you know, we try to prepare and we try to do our best. But just sometimes things, some things are better. Sometimes things are better than others. And I have to tell you on Sunday, I I wasn't really impressed with, with my sermon. Um, you know, I finished up and I was like, I missed the mark missed the mark. There was good points in it, but I could have made them better, right? And I could have put them into a more logical sequence. So if you noticed a difference, then I do apologize, right? And uh, really it comes down to preparation. So um, I need to make sure that I prepare. Uh, I usually prepare a lot more than what I did. So uh, again, I do apologize. But even though I say that, Somebody always, it, I can walk out, it, it's not It's not uncommon on a Sunday, say, eh, I don't know about that. And then somebody sends you an email or a text message or gives you a call and says, hey, man, I really got something out of that. So that happens most of the time. You're like, okay, well, we did all right. I didn't get that yesterday. <laughs> so I have a feeling we missed the mark a little bit. But that's what happens, right? We are imperfect people. That's the way that we're made. So we shouldn't be, shouldn't be afraid of that. All right. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys have jumped in here. We'll see what's going on. Uh, I've got to catch up here. Sandy Sauerbeck, hello. Judy Hatch, good morning. Larry and Carolyn Thomas, good morning. Barbara Wolf, got there. Carrie, thanks for doing this. Bob Ando, good morning. Tracy Crutz is back. Hi, Cindy. Absolutely. So we've got to pray for Jan. We will. Thank you for letting us know that. Prayers. Hi, Judy Martin. How are you doing? Robin Allen. Uh, we need to pray for Jan. We will do that. Barbara Shoot. Ann Winslow. Hello. Yeah, I'm sorry. With that first, the first thing we tried just didn't work out. Thanks, Don. Appreciate that. Hi, Barbara Wolf. Yes. Um, so uh, we did have the boys home, and that was really it. You know, in hindsight, 
in absolute hindsight, if I was going to be as attentive as I try to be at all times, I probably should have taken Sunday off because we had the, we had the whole family. It was great time and everything, but I just didn't have that time on Saturday that I usually carve out to say, okay, this is this is what the sermon's going to be, and and write down my notes. And I didn't, and uh, I tried to think that I could do it on on Sunday morning, didn't work out. So I, now I know, now I know, and you know now too. All right, okay. Very good. All right. So we need to pray for Jan, Cindy's uh, daughter. She's got pneumonia and she needs to recover. So, um, you know, we had all of all of our boys were back and they all left yesterday. So it was very quiet around our house last night after, well, we after 730 when we dropped off. And uh, I was going to say, you know what, I'm going to watch the lions. Well, I never got to it. I fell asleep on the couch. I was so tired. So didn't see that. But I saw that they won. It didn't matter, unfortunately, because the Rams, even though I did watch the Rams and Seattle Seahawks game, and I was come on Rams, and it looked like they were going to do it, and then they lost it in overtime. Anyway, so um, they were out. Lions were out of the playoffs regardless of what happened, but they still did. And they had a good year. They've got nine wins. That's wonderful. Okay, if you're that, who's watching football tonight? Ellen Bryan's daughter. Okay. I'm sorry. I picked that up. So we got to, so, um, well, we're going to pray for Jan. And Judy, yes, prayers for you too. Okay. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? I'm going to pray. We're going to pray for people to heal is what we have to do. And uh, we'll do fine. We had safe travels, as I said. We got everybody in. Everybody got from my family got home yesterday. It was great. Now we just have to. Uh, so now we have Lindsay. Okay. So I'm going to pray for Lindsay and Jan and Judy. Okay. Let's see if I can get it right. Okay. Let's go. We're going to pray right now. Lord, thank you for this day. Sometimes we have frustrations. Sometimes we have frustrations, Lord. And, and, um, and then uh, that's easy to set us off in the wrong direction. So we thank you for this time that we've had to um, pull ourselves back together. And uh, Lord, as we gather here, we thank you for your word. But the first thing on our minds is the people that uh, perhaps ourselves and certainly the people that we know and love, all who are in need of help, and so we have some prayers of healings that we want to lift up this morning. We want to lift up uh, Jan, and uh, we want to lift up Judy, and uh, we also want to lift up Lindsay. All of them, Lord, are in need of healing. So we lift these prayers, knowing that you are the great physician. Everybody is in a, is, all of three of these people, Lord, are uh, in the process of healing. We're thankful for that, but we do ask that they might be returned quickly. And there's many people whose names we have not mentioned here today who are in need of healing. So we do lift up all of those things, all of those people. And then finally, Lord, uh, as we as we start this week, Lord, we pray that we might continue to seek your will, that we might make have the actions and the thought processes that honor you. And Lord, um, so maybe we didn't do everything perfectly last week. Let us uh, know that you forgive so as we come to you and we lift up those things that we didn't do so well, we would ask that you would just help guide us so that next time we'll be better. And Lord, it's not about where we are right now, but it's about where we're going to end up. And we know that that has been promised to us from the very beginning. So it should allow us to live our lives fuller with less worries. But Lord, that only happens when we allow it. So let us know about your grace and your mercy. And do we do ask all of this in your name. Amen. All right. Amen, all. God bless you. <clears throat> all right. I'm getting it ready. So, all right. So Jan is Ann's daughter. I'm sorry, Ann. You, that was posted under Cindy. So that's why I messed that up. So I do apologize doing a lot of apologies today <laughs> all right you guys are tough to keep up with sometimes all right well god bless you all happy new year have a great day in the lord remember god loves you 
We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. I love you too. And we'll talk to you later. God bless. Bye-bye. Have a great day in the Lord.